everybody. Hi. We resume with part four. Yeah. Of this mess. <laughs> Last time. We, uh, got into a team. Yep. With a... Bunch of different stereotypes. Anime stereotypes. Right, let's, uh, get to load. And we ate pasta roni. Yep. Whatever that stuff was. I pull up the schedule on my phone and ch check my first class. Gear, Arsenal 201. The building isn't too far away either. 201? It's his second year. <clears throat> Alright. I soon reach the building. The classroom is about half the size of the lecture hall for my piloting 101 class. For some reason, this is a comfort to me. Probably because it reminds me of the class sizes at CINY. Wonder why. I take a seat near the back of the room just as the professor enters. Is he following me? No, it's the. <laughs> Good morning, class. Welcome to Gear Arsenal 201. I'm sure you're all tired of hearing the same warm up spiel, so I won't even bother with it. Instead, we're going to drive straight into the material. Question. Who can name one of the leading companies in gear weapon manufacturing? Um... We had this yesterday. Yeah, I forgot. Potato Shooter Incorporated. Paragon Weaponry. Dashu. Aludian Enterprises. Dashu, I think. Yeah, because that's the last thing I remember. Yeah. Dashu? That would be incorrect. Dashu has only recently begun investing in the Cena Robotics field. However, their core business is still energy drinks. The correct answer would be Paragon Weaponry. Ah. No, now we're stupid. Their recent area of study has shown that. We're the laughing stock of the class! Yeah, probably not. They're sophomores, they don't give a shit. He goes into the details of Paragon Weapon R&D and the future of the beam weaponry for the uh, remainder of class. We got lasers? Awesome. That's all the time we have for today. You'll find this week's readings and assignments on your web link. Have a good day. Oh, the lecture's over. I wish my lectures were that quick. Students scramble to collect their things before hurrying out of the room. Run, run! I think I'll go back to the hangar. This class has inspired me to go have a proper look at my gear. Make sure that thing is still running. And, uh, probably cheat on my motorcycle with it. <laughs> I take the path through the pilot's lounge and follow the tunnels until I reach my gear. So what kind of asshole are we going to meet in the hangar today? Well, I only see two, so they're not assholes. No. No, they're just background things. Pro yeah. They're probably not even part of the pilot, pilot program. They're part of probably some sort of engineer mechanic program. Pulling down the ladder beside my uh, docking station, I climb up to the top, which is about level with the chest section of my robot. So are like, are they used com for compet? So they're used for combat. So. Like, why do just normal people have them? I don't know. We don't even know what year this is. It's 20, 30 X or something. I guess less about war, more about competition. Mm -hmm. I unlock the chest cavity with a, a mechanical roar. It splits open in separating panels, revealing a lowered seat. I easily hop into the seat and breathe in the comforting scent of metal and plastic. It smells like chicken. It faintly reminds me of new car smell. Yes, that smell that everybody goes gaga over, but I'm just like, it smells like chemicals in here. Yeah. Once I'm settled, I trigger the closing sequence. As the chest panels return, my seat scoops me in further into my gear until I'm nestled in the darkness of the cockpit. 
Turn on the lights! I can't say anything! Oh, this was like... If this was me in real life, my, like, claustrophobia would, like, go, like, crazy. Because it's, like, dark, closed space. Oh, no. I'm gonna get stuck in the giant fucking robot. <laughs> Let me out! I initiate the boot-up sequence. The cockpit glows a faint red, then flickers into life. And I can't help but smile at the familiarity of it all. What kind of fucking read was that, Jay? The <laughs> second. <laughs> the bright glow of the panels illuminate the interior until there isn't a trace of a shadow left. Statistics blink around to me in a series of rapid numbers and diagrams. Really? Because it looks like it's still loading to me. Initiating. Gear initialization sequencing complete. It's alive! Yay! Thank you, Jarvis. I mean, Eagle. <laughs> the familiar voice of my gear feels like a warm welcome from an old friend. Familiar? You mean, met this thing before? It's his robot. He brought it over from America. You've We've been playing this. Have you not been paying attention? My memory's rewritten all the time. Well, yes, that's how memory works, but still. Eagle, please run a comprehensive check. System in progress. Nothing to do now but wait. Got bored already. A family of squirrels has seemed to have created a nest inside my left leg. The lights along my display pulse with ch changing colors as the check progresses. It flows through warm colors, red, orange, yellow, before illuminating the cockpit with a bright green. Green for go. All system functions normal. Unknown docking station detected. Intruder? No. Register the current dock as home station. Completed. Recommendation. Please update system calibration configuration. Ah, uh, the updates. <laughs> updates. They just pile up. This is recommended all the time. Whenever we change locations, Eagle will request a recalibration of the system. Even the slightest difference in air pressure can trigger an, an occur inaccuracy. inaccuracy. At least the process is easy. All I have to do is make sure I correctly follow sequential number order so Eagle can achieve the necessary internal calculations. Watch as somebody interrupts him in the middle of it. Alright, start up the process. Calibration sequence initiated. I give it a few minutes as Eagle automatically adjusts itself. Da da da. <laughs> You're picking up. More ellipses. No, that has two dots, so there can't be an ellipses. Calibration successful. Perfect. Everything seems to be in order. Oh, someone didn't interrupt. Is like anything gonna happen? Oh, I shut down. After one last look, I shut down my gear and unlock the chest cavity again. Well, I wanted to take it on a walk. To where? Are you gonna like walk around the campus crushing students? Because that would be fun. But also I think illegal probably. I'm a freaking robot! <laughs> Once I hop out, the panels slide back in place until I hear the faint click of them locking. As I turn towards the elevator, my spot show waving at me. I nimbly uh, make my way down and stand beside it. Hey, bro. Please don't call him. No, don't He's pick up on the bro thing. Oh, oh, God. See, you're only encouraging him, Jonathan. Jay. Jay, sorry. Hey. hey, how's it going? Good. Is this your go-to hangout place? This is the second time I've run into you here. Yeah, this is the second time I've been here. Well, what are you doing here? Yeah, I guess it's starting to be... <clears throat> what are you doing here? I just thought I'd pay a visit to my gear. 
It helps when I keep her company for a bit. Keeps her spirits up. Are the giant robots sentient? That's why I only go for ma male gear. Her? You mean a girl? Inanimate yeah. objects don't have genders. I... So, like, the gear... The, the other two answers indicate that there are genders for the, gir for the gear, which is weird. They're robots. Well, we did have a male voice in the cockpit. I guess, but that's like... You can make Siri male, too. Like, that doesn't make your phone a girl. Or a boy. But anyways, let's pick an answer. I uh, pick one. I don't care. That's why I only go for it. Actually, I'll just go with this one. Her? Yeah. Your girlfriend? Show laughs. No, my gear. Your gear is a she? Yeah, what's yours? My gear? Right. A she or a he? And it. Oh. He pauses. Well, thanks anyways. For what? For thinking it was possible for me to have a girlfriend. I think Mayu's interested in you, but whatever. Well then. So, what were you doing here? Eh, robot diagnostics. Just checking to make sure everything's uh, working fine. And does it? No, it's all terrible and broken, and that's why I just left it as it is. Yeah. He glances curiously at my gear. How about a simulator match? I shrug. It'd be nice to get a feel for how things are done at Ace. Sure. We can both use the basic robot program. That way, all accessories and weapons will be the same, and it'll be based on skill alone. May the best man win. Me. He grins and races in the opposite direction. I see him pause by a green gear before I get back into my... So are they just like... How do you do a simulation with gear? Are they just gonna just stand there in their robot and pretend to fight? Once I'm settled in the cockpit, I switch on the open network configuration. My giant robot has Wi-Fi! Awesome! Immediately, a request from Sho comes in, and I accept. After we're connected, we boot up our virtual training simulation program. Oh. Very fancy. I haven't seen an American-style gear up close before. These are the robots? That's not what my machine looked like in the hangar. This... this is the... These are the robots? They just look like guys in costumes. Yeah. No cool-looking trees or joints? No, like, sort of weird, exaggerated things, like... Come on, it just looks like a dude in a fancy costume. I'm disappointed. Me too. Hmm. I experiment with my gear controls and watch in amusement as it makes the same movements within the simulator. <laughs> Simulators are freakishly accurate at emulating the real thing but I still can't quite replicate the feeling of live matches. Is that why they look so stupid? Because they're simulator robots and not actual robots? Maybe. You can't feel every impact or even the slightest shift in motion within a VTS. As you can see, both of us are kitted with the same standard equipment. You have your energy shield for blocking, thrusters for movement, a ranged weapon, and a close combat weapon. Glad I got my controller there. I Remember, press B to jump. I evaluate my gear and find all the components he mentioned. Any particular reason why we aren't playing from our personal arsenal? This will level the playing field. We'll have to win by skill alone. I need a handicap so I can at least have a chance of meeting you. I'm trying to see what I'm made of. Show just grins. Remember, you have to use the right tool at the right time. 
There's usually more than one right move you can make, but you have to think fast. Um. Alright, thanks. This isn't my first time. Let's get on with it. So what, are we gonna actually have to fight? Or is it just gonna it's be... It's a visual now. Okay. That's this good. isn't my first time. I'm no stranger to penetrating a gear with my beam blade. That sounded wrong. <laughs> Show snorts and a laugh. I hope you soften him up for some shots. I can't stop the grin on my face. Are you ready? Who's really enjoying this? I don't know. Not me. Yup. Let's do this. My hands fall naturally into place and grip the controls. I can't stop the smile that spreads across my face as my heart beats faster in anticipation. I'm gonna find my best friend! He's totally not your best friend. I've missed this. The robot's your best friend. Or the motorcycle. One of those two. Eagle shifts into a fighting stance and holds out his gun. While Sho activates his thrusters and points his double guns at me. Oh, he's got more firepower. Dodge. Slow. Evade. Evade! Okay, it looks like we have a uh, quick uh, responses. I dash out of the way and his attack misses its mark. I equip one of my guns and return fire. He dodges. But my shot still grazes him and he takes some damage. As I boost forward, Sho moves back to keep the distance between us. He shoots again, but his aim is not accurate and I weave away. With my gun in hand, I take aim. Fire! Fire! Ah. My aim is true and Sho's shield shimmers as it absorbs the shot. Judging by how deep of a Shimmer. It looks like he took a significant amount of damage. Since Sho likes using ranged weapons, I better close the distance and force him into a melee battle. I boost forward. Strike! I switch to my sword mid boost and swing the blade in a high arc. Sho tries to block with his guns and my sword lands on them with a loud crack. We struggle in a battle of wills, and sweat beads down my face. A loud roar escapes my lips as I channel my strength into my attack and break through Sho's defense. Okay. Ah! Intensi intensify! As my sword follows through, Sho's gear goes dark. With the match over, I shut down my gear and get back on the ground. Did I win? After a few minutes, Sho appears. Not bad. I knew I made a good choice with you. I've got a sixth sense for these things. Sure. That's why I beat you, as I think. Hey, thanks. You're not so bad yourself. Anyway, we'll want to meet up tomorrow before the qualifier to practice. So, what's your number? We quickly exchange numbers. Oh, yeah. um, I know. So, he asked for your number. Hmm. Maybe there is a gay option. So, I guess I should go and get some stuff done. Yeah, me too. Well, I'll see you later then. Wait, let's play another match. I need to study. The pause lounge always has something going on. I need a study means I think you go home, and then the pilot's lounge has something going on means you probably meet up with one of the other pilots on your team. Or meet more people. Yeah, more people, I don't know. Yeah, let's socialize a bit. Yeah. Mingle. Bye. I head back towards the pilot's lounge. So far, every time I've passed through the lounge, it has been full of students. I'm sure I'll either meet someone cool or find something interesting to do there. When I enter the lounge, I'm surprised to see a crowd surrounding the bar. 
I can't make out anything intelligible from the jumble of words and voices like my tongue. But it must be something big based on the sheer level of excitement in the room. What's going on? I bet it's a hot chick. Are they giving out free food? I know which one I would pick. Let's go with that then. That's not the one I would pick, Jay. That's the one I would pick. Gee, just because I'm a lesbian. I forced my way through the throng of people. Much of the dismay of those beside me, regardless, I ignore their protests and continue to make my, my through and th until I hear the pilot beside me mention something about an Akira. Ooh, is there gonna be a giant blob monster in Tokyo? That sounds suspiciously like a person and not enough like a food. Yep. Disappoint. I turn towards the two girls I just overheard. New people? Um, hi? Hi. What's an Akira? I think you mean who is an Akira? Oh well. There goes my chances for a free lunch. I could have really used an onigiri right now, too. Okay, who's Akira? How do you not know who he is? He's only the top pilot at Ace. I just moved here. And so nice, too. Yeah, he listens to you when you talk and treats everyone like they're important. Unless he's a total dreamboat. Sounds like a douche. Plus, the first pipe blushes and her friend laughs. Right. But the qualifiers haven't happened yet. You mean from last year's rankings? He's been a top pilot since his first year here. Since first year? Yep. He was on his team starting lineup. So, what year is he now? Third year. They sigh wistfully. Suddenly, the first student perks up and grabs her friend. Oh, he just looked at me! Did you see that? Girl, ladies, ladies. Oh, he looks like a douche. <laughs> Look at that annoying little long hair, like flipped up like that. Like, what the hell, dude? And that th expression on his face. Ugh. I'm getting bad vibes from this guy, and uh, the, and him being like a white-haired anime guy is not helping. He's either evil or he's dead, <laughs> or both. As if on cue. A path forms amid the throng of people, and a male pilot with white hair and kind eyes walks through. Those eyes are not kind. Oh. They're staring into your soul. Well, they would be if they were fucking open. <laughs> oh, he even has the oh, red yeah, anime yeah. guy on. Oh, God, he's white-haired, red-eyed anime guy. He's evil, or he's dead. He's it's literally, those are the only two options. <gasps> He's laughing with the group of girls surrounding him. What does he sound like? Our eyes meet for a second, his calm smile still intact. That can't be right. He must have recognized someone behind me and smiled at them. Regardless, after the departure of Akira and his group, the lounge feels quieter, even though it's still full at most students. Thank God. The pilots turn back to whatever programs they are watching, or order drinks at the bar. Yeah, can I get a drink after watching that? Yep. Others return to the game said they were originally playing. I stand awkwardly on my own. I don't see anyone I recognize. Everyone seems to be intent on their own thing, so I decide to head home. It's getting late anyway. I wait impatiently for the bus. When it pulls up, I climb on and grab an aisle seat. As the bus moves on, 
I dream of my beautiful bike the entire way home. Oh, God, this guy's embarrassing. Well, at least he's better than that Akira guy. We don't know anything other than he's dead meat. That's all we know. I enter the house and hear laughter coming from the kitchen. I drop my bag on the floor and follow the sounds of my family and the delicious smells of dinner and a slobbering dog. <laughs> it sounds like she's making pasta again, but I know that's not it. That's just what the sound people made for mixing noises. Hey! I sit at the table and watch Niki and Uncle Kaido move around the kitchen. They're wearing ma matching aprons. Looking good, Uncle. That apron really suits you. It brings out your eyes. Please tell me it has, like, ruffles. I want, I want ruffle the aprons, damn it. That's it. I'm done. Tears off the apron and tosses it aside. Ah. You said I'd look cool. Nikki giggles and goes back to the food she's cooking. You did look cool. Every lady loves a man who can cook. And I love a lady who cooks for me. Amen. Okay. Kaido sits beside me. We laugh as Nikki sticks her tongue out at us. Get a raspberry. Amen. What are we having? Yes. It's always with the guessing games with you. Oh god, not this again. I'm with you there. Kaito laughs. How was your day, bud? I met the scariest guy ever. I, I met this guy. He's either going to be, like, evil and destroy the world, or he's going to die. And I'm going to be there to watch, and it's going to be tragic, and I'm going to be crying. And his, like, neck will, like, just, his neck will explode, and his head will come off of this... Like, because the head will come off his shoulders because this is a giant robot show, so... Yeah, like a firework. It was all right. No, it wasn't. Yeah. What kind of shenanigans did you get up to? Yeah, I, uh, played with a friend. Nothing major. Had class this morning. Checked out my gear after. One of my teammates showed up and we had a practice simulation. Sounds fun. It was. I think we'll make a good team. Who else is on the team? A couple of girls. Cho, myself, and a couple of girls. Good looking girls. Why does that matter? I shrug. Yeah, I guess. Kaito winks at me, and I just shake my head. Nikki places full plates in front of us, then removes her apron and joins us at the table. What else did you get up to today? Um, let's do the scary guy. I hung out at the pilot's lounge for a bit. That sounds cool. Yeah, it was. I actually learned a lot about this guy named Kira. He's the top tier pilot in the uh, program. So he's your rival. Rival? We're doing that? Yeah, these types of stories always need a villainous rival. I think that's unfair to judge someone as villainous just because they, you met them under mysterious circumstances. And I just think it's unfair to judge someone as villainous if you just met them. Or not even meet them. Your eyes met for two seconds. Well, I only saw him. I didn't engage him. Um, well, he's actually a pretty nice guy. Well liked. Can't even say anything. Really? Is he cute? Uh, how should I know? Did the girls think he was cute? Yeah. Yeah, they're like so they're like slaves there. I guess so. Nikki beams. Accomplished, polite, and cute. We could learn a thing from him. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Nothing. Excuse me. Kaito cleans his plate, then rests a hand on his stomach and lets out a loud belch. Nikki and I blink at him, and I think I've heard it. I was simply complimenting the chef. 
Like, who taught you manners, Shrek? I should do the same. No, you shouldn't. I open my mouth to burp, but Nikki squeals in protest. Please don't. I'd rather not have them. Kaito and I laugh as Nikki clears the table. Then Kaito rests a hand on my shoulder. Sounds like you've had quite the day, bud. Really? I feel like nothing happened. I'll get easier once I'm in the swing of things. Of course. Wanna watch a movie or something before you two head to bed? No, I gotta sleep away so I can get this guy out of my nightmares! <laughs> I almost say yes, but a long yawn escapes my mouth. I'm pretty fried. I think I might go review some notes, then get to bed early. I've got qualifiers tomorrow. That's fair. Nikki? I'll join you when I'm done cleaning. I'll help you. Thanks! I stand up, and Kaito and Nikki both wave. Good night! Yep, thanks for doing all the work for me. Good night! Good night, simulated family. I wave back and head to my room. In my room, I crawl into bed and grab my tablet to review my notes from today's class. I did get that answer wrong today. Mm -hmm. I'm only part way through when my eyes grow heavy and I can't read any longer. I flick off the light and close my eyes. As I drift to sleep, I dream of tomorrow's qualifiers. Maybe something will actually happen tomorrow! But, I think we're gonna have to wait for it. Yep. Alright, <clears throat> uh, leave that at that. Okay, I think that'll be enough for uh, tonight. Quick save here. And until next time, everybody, to be continued. Bye bye, Suzuka.